Hey, thanks for joining me for another video. My name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make videos for non-techies like me and maybe like you. And in this video, it might run a little long, it's gonna all be about translating your WordPress website. Now, I only speak one language, unfortunately. I only speak English and read English. I know a little bit of Spanish. Uh, I live in California, so um, there's a large Latin population here, and I have a lot of Latin friends, so I know a word here or there, but that's what I am limited to. And I've been getting requested left and right on how to translate a WordPress website, and so I wanted to create this in-depth video to cover it for you. Now, when it comes to translating WordPress, we're actually talking about three different things, maybe. The first thing is you'd probably want the back end part of WordPress, the admin area and all that, you probably want that translated into your language. By default, it's English, but there are so many languages that there's translation packs already for. But also, your WordPress site is made up of a theme and several plugins. So for the back end translation, you will need that translated as well. And I'm gonna explain how this whole back end translation thing works. Then there's the front end translation where you would want the front end part of your website. That's the part that all your website visitors see. You're gonna want that in your language translated. And then the third part of translating a website is if you want a multilingual website where there are multiple language options for the people that come to your site. So I'm gonna to try to hit all three of these in this video in that order. So the first is translating the back end of WordPress. Now for this whole video, I'm gonna be doing everything off of this free done for you template that you see right here that I launched about a week ago. And this is a free template. You can download and install this. I'll even put a link down below to it. And what it's gonna allow you to do is launch an online learning environment, an online course where there's students and there's lessons and there's multiple courses and there's quizzes if you want, there's certificates issued if you want, and it's completely free. And since launching this, I've had people over and over ask for this video and that's why I'm making this video and I'm gonna use this in the entire video. So let's first jump into translating the back end of WordPress. So here is the back end of WordPress. Now, WordPress has made strides and it's very admirable in making sure that WordPress itself is available in as many languages as possible. And they've actually made this really easy. So when you log into the back end of WordPress and you go down to settings, you can click on the general tab and scroll all the way down and we have this option here that says site language. Now what's nice about this is when you choose your language, then WordPress will go to this site and I'm gonna show you the site in a second to see if there are language translations for the various plugins that you're using as well. And if there is, then you're gonna be able to have your theme and plugins translated. And if there isn't, then that theme or plugin will not have a translation. Now this done for you template that I put together is based upon three core components. The theme is called Generate Press. The front end page builder is called the Beaver Builder. And what's facilitating all of the courses and the lessons and that whole side of it is called Lifter LMS. And the good thing is, is these are all solid, reliable solutions for WordPress. And they already have a whole bunch of translations. So before I go and I flip this switch, I just want to show you how this works. Now, it's all linked into this site right here called GlotPress. And I have no idea what glot means. Maybe there's a meaning behind it, but this is a way for theme developers and plugin developers 
and normal folks like you to get together and make sure everything's translated. Let me show you what I mean. The theme and each of those plugins have a specific page on here. So for instance, right here is the page on this site for the theme, Generate Press. And you can scroll down and you can see all the languages that it's currently translated into and the status of all the other languages. So we can see for Romanian, it's 100% translated. And then you have a lot of these 98 and 99s. And it tells you how many bits of the theme still need to be translated. And so for here, for German, it's just one little bit. So all the main parts of the theme are already going to be translated if there's just one little bit that is waiting for a translation. And you can scroll down and you can see this change. And it's all in order here. So if I scroll down a bit, so for instance, uh, Vietnamese, you can see it's only 44% translated into the Vietnamese language. And we can keep scrolling down and you can see all these different statuses. Now what's nice about this is if you are capable of translating from English into your language, you can connect to any of these software developers through this site and help them with the translation. And that's where the whole community can come together. So if your language, say for example, you speak Vietnamese, you want a Vietnamese translation, well, you're not the only one that probably wants it. So if you would just connect in with the developer through this site and start tran assisting them with the translation, everyone else would benefit off that translation. So that is how powerful this platform is and how you can actually get involved to make a difference and give back to these software developers. Now don't worry if your language is listed here and it's not fully translated. You will have two options. One, you can connect in with the software developer and help them with the translation and the alternative I'm going to show you in a moment in a plugin that you can install and put your own custom translation in. So this right here is Generate Press. Uh, right here is the Page Builder Beaver Builder. Now they have a really sweet deal. If you are really good at translating, there's a language that they don't have translated, you can contact them and if you do provide the translation and it's a good translation, they will actually give you right here. It says, and we'll hook you up with a free year of the pro mem membership. So you could actually have the paid version of Beaver Builder for free if you contribute to them in that way. And that's normally $199. So it's such a great deal that they are offering there. And so for Beaver Builder, you can click Click right here and see the status of the plugin or the theme. I'll go ahead and click on the plugin right here and so we can see the status. And I was talking to them the other day. They said they're about to launch about 20 or 30 new complete translations. So uh, they might not be there yet uh, as we're seeing right here. Uh, but you can scroll down and you can see how much of these have been translated as you scroll down. It's pretty amazing how far they've come along. So I would encourage you to connect in with them if you wanna help translate and it's something that you're good at doing. Uh, so this is Beaver Builder and I hope you're noticing this is why I made this done for you template using reliable stuff because it's all translated. I could have just gone and picked any old theme and tried to build it in, but there wouldn't have been support. There wouldn't have been translations. It would have been a disaster. I want you to be in the best shape possible. Anyway, so this is Beaver Builder. Next, let's take a look at Lifter LMS. It's right here. And this is their status page on the same website. And you can scroll down here and you can see the progress that they are making. I think they only made the plugin translatable maybe six or eight months ago. So they're making a lot of progress in getting this translated. And I'm sure that they could use some help as well. There's a page right here that says, 
how can I contribute to the translations? So you just click on this contact us page, contact them to get access to begin assisting them with the translations. And the best part is when you help them translate, you're actually helping everyone that's gonna use Lyft or LMS or whatever the plugin or theme is after you have a translation. So here is Lyft or LMS. So now, there's also one more thing. If your language is not included or you're gonna wanna do something totally custom and unique, there's a solution. There's a free plugin called Loco Translate. Not local, Loco Translate. And ironically, just today they launched this uh, version two. You can see right here of this plugin. I was playing around with version one, but now they have version two out. And you can see right here, this, this plugin is active on over 200,000 websites. It's got amazing reviews and it just works and is really easy to use. So I'm gonna show you how to use Loco Translate in order to build a custom translation or fill in the gaps of a translation that might have a maybe 50% done or whatever and you don't want to contribute or you don't feel confident enough to contribute in the translation. So let's go ahead and log back into the back end of the website. Now, I actually already have Loco Translate installed. If you go to plugins and click on add new, all you have to do is type Loco right here. I bet all you have to do is type Loco and there it is. And then you just click this button to download and then one more time to activate it. And then it adds this menu here called Loco Translate. So let's walk around Loco Translate first. So when you go to the home of this plugin by just going to the home uh, menu item right here, it's gonna first list out your active theme that you have activated and it's showing this child theme, which this is the parent theme, the Generate Press. And then it's gonna show you a list of your running plugins. And off to the side here, it shows the language sets. So the way this works is you can see if your language is available, and if it's not, this is what you do. So we can go straight to the themes here or the plugins here or WordPress here. I'm gonna click on themes. When you click on themes, you're gonna to wanna to choose your parent theme if you're using a, a parent-child theme type of setup. So in this situation, we are, so you would click right here where it says Generate Press. Click on Create Template. And then right here, we just need to click it again. Click on Create Template. And then it takes you back here and now you can click on new language again and now it's going to take you to this screen right here. So first you would choose your language right here and this is going to be the language we're going to change WordPress into. So you can choose whatever language. So I will just choose German. And then right here you can see there's 185 strings that need to be translated and that's 180 five different little snippets of text that you would want to put into your language. So then you just click on start translating like this and uh, right here is where you're gonna see all those 185 strings. I'm scrolling down so you can see they're all real short little bits of text like what's the word for enabled in your language, disabled in your language, content layout in your language, all these different things. And the way it works is, let me scroll back up to the top here. So the first one there is archives. So you would type what archives is right here in German, and then you would save it, and then you would go to the next one, and then you would save it, and then you would go to, to the next one, and then you would save it, and on and on. And you can search for different strings of text by just entering the string here and you can search for it. So if I wanted everything having to do with a footer, I can go footer like this and you can see it's already found it right there. And that's pretty much all there is to adding a custom translation for the back end of WordPress if one does not already exist. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how to change your language in WordPress and then pull down the language packs for the different themes and plugins that are, we already know are available because we've seen that it's available here on GotPress. So uh, let's see, why don't I try 
Italian. So I know Italian's available here, and I'm pretty sure Italian's available here, and Italian's available here. So why don't I go ahead and translate this site into Italian? Now, being a English speaker only, this is how I do it. I have two tabs open, both on these general settings right here. So let me open up another tab. And what this means is I can change the language in one of the tabs, but the other tab is already still in English until I hit refresh so I can go and change my language quick and easy. So here we are. Actually, let me close this. Here we are. I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to change this language to Italian. So let's just scroll down here. And there it is, Italiano. I'm assuming that would be it, obviously. And then I'm going to click on Save Changes. And let's see what happens here together. So you can see that some things have been translated here and some things have not. So we see courses. This is the Lifter LMS stuff, and you can see that hasn't been translated. And then you can see right here, some of the Generate Press stuff has not been translated. And to further show you, I'm going to click on the Customizer, and this should all be translated into Italian, and we'll see if it is right now. You can see it hasn't, and I'm going to show you how to fix that right now. So let me get back into WordPress. You have to go to updates and you can see now there's an update available. Essentially what we have to do is scroll down and click this button here that says uh, update your translations or something like that. Like I said, I don't speak the language. So I bet when I click this, then everything should go into the proper language. So I'm gonna click on it and it's gonna go to the Got Press and you can see right here, it's downloaded the translation for Beaver Builder, Lifter LMS, Local Translate, and Generate Press. So I'm going to click on here, and now we will be able to see the courses is now translated, and the lessons is all translated. And lastly, I'm going to go into the customizer, and you'll see that the different options in the customizer have been translated as well and you can see them right there. So let me back on out of here. And that is how you will go ahead and translate your site. And then you could go in here to local translate and you can even edit the translation that's on your local machine if you feel like the translation is not accurate. And I was in researching this video, I did see a few videos on the local translate plugin and some people were saying you should always just make your own translation. To me, it seems like a lot of work to do your own translation, though. So anyways, now, because of my little trick, I can go back here and I can change the, the language back to English by just clicking on Save Changes. And now when I go here and I do a refresh, I should be all returned back to English. So this is how you're going to be able to translate, completely translate the back end of WordPress. And your theme actually has portions of it that affect the front end of WordPress. That's like where it will say categories or tags or things of that nature. So it also translates little bits and pieces on the front end of WordPress. So we've already made it through one of the three aspects of translating. Now, the second aspect of translating is actually really simple. That's when you just want your website in your language, and it's simple. You'll make your page titles in your language, your tags in your language, your categories in your language, your content in your language, your menu items in your language, etc., etc. That's simple. Now, the third part of translating is not so simple and not so straightforward. And that's when you want a website that will have more than one language. And this is facilitated with a plugin. And there's two different options I'm going to point you in the direction of. So let's take a look at their websites right now. So first, here is a free option that is very, very popular. It's called Polylang. 
Okay, now when I scroll down here, we can see that this plugin is currently running on over 100,000 WordPress websites and it has amazingly good rating right here. You can see there's over 423 five-star reviews on it and it's very powerful. Now, there's pros and cons with PolyLang and they also have a paid version of it that you could purchase. Now, what it it does, I'm gonna actually show you a comparison chart in a second so you can see what this does and it doesn't do. Now, what the former gold standard was in translating is called WPML, and here's their website. And uh, WPML does not have a free version, it's only a paid version. And so when I show you the differences, then you can make your decision better of which plugin that you want to use. So when I scroll down here, you can see they have three versions. One is 29, the next one is 79, and the next one is 195. And there's this grid here that's gonna show you some of the differences uh, between them. And I will say that PolyLang, their paid version is $99, but then they also sell another add-on that's $99, an additional $99, that will allow you to have multiple translations for WooCommerce. Now, WPML, have, actually here, let me just show you some of the differences in these prices. Um, so the 195, it looks like it's a, and it's a lifetime license, you're, you're gonna have lifetime support, but these other versions, it's $39 a year for updates and support. And then the differences are right here, and it has to do with some custom things as well. So you might wanna go ahead and look at this different grid. And they also provide this comparison chart. And this is good, but you always have to take a comparison chart with a grain of salt, because obviously if, they're comparing their product to other products, they're gonna always put theirs in the best light. So just take that with a grain of salt. But they're showing uh, PolyLang against their $29 package and that more expensive one, that's 79. Now the, you can uh, hover your mouse cursor over these questions to find out what the heck this feature actually is. It might not be what you think it is. I reviewed this and I really felt like this pricing chart was very self-serving and you know who could blame them so uh, there's um, translation management like you think translation management I want translation management right but then when you hover over it you you realize it's just you can have other people being able to log in your WordPress site to translate it for you which I don't really think is a big deal so let me scroll down to what I think is the most important uh, differences here uh, WooCommerce support. So if you are gonna use WPML, you need that $79 version right here. And uh, you're not gonna get that off the 29 or the free PolyLang. Integration with translation services. This is actually cool. Um, if you want your, lang your site in different languages, uh, there's a real neat integration with WPML where you can just pay someone to make those translations for you and it's all a seamless integrated process in your WordPress website. Um, so uh, that's this integration with translation services that you see right here. Let's scroll down a bit. Quiet translation mode. I don't see the importance of that. Uh, PolyLang does have SEO features, so that's kind of a misnomer right there. Here's another example of the self-serving nature of this pricing grid where it says plugins compatibility. It says the ability to use the plugin with other major WordPress plugins. Well, you can use PolyLang with it. Um, it's just a lame line item here that I think actually devalues the value of this comparison chart right here. And they don't make it clear whether they're comparing the free version of PolyLang or the paid version of PolyLang. So uh, it's pretty self-serving right here. They are the oldest and most established translation plugin, this WPML though. So anyways, uh, you can take it with a grain of salt and do what you want. So let me install PolyLang. So I'm gonna go to plugins and let's see, I don't think I have it installed. I'm gonna go to add new and I'm gonna search for PolyLang, hit enter. And here it is right here. And I'm on WordPress 4.6, so now when you click Install Now, it just starts installing. 
And then the button's gonna change to say activate in a sec, just like that. And then it goes ahead and activates the plugin. Now what there is, there's gonna be a new option under settings right here that says languages. And this is for polylang. Now the first thing they prompt you with I don't know anything about this. You'll have to uh, look into it on your own. It says right here, I can click on this button and I can integrate this thing with Ling Lingotech to automatically translate my site into another language for free. I don't know, that seems a little too good to be true. Maybe it's like a machine that does the translation, which there might it might not be that good anyway. And when you click on activate Lingotech, it essentially downloads the Lingotech plug-in and then integrates the two. But you can click on this more button, learn more and decide what you wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on close. Now, it's really simple to work with Polylang. It's pretty amazing that it's free. So the first step is to choose your default language and there's the drop down here. So for me, it's gonna be English and of course there's a whole bunch of different types of English. I am choosing English for the United States. So I'm gonna click on that and it automatically fills this all in. Make sure it chose the right flag and then go ahead and click add new language and then we're gonna see the language here on the right. Now what you do is you choose the next language you want. So let's uh, go with Italian, huh? Let's see, go to I, here it is, Italiano and it put the right flag in there and I'm gonna go ahead and click on add new language. So now we have these two languages. We've got English and Italiano. Okay, now let's take a quick look at these settings because there's an important decision you need to make and that's right here where it says URL modifications. So I'm gonna click on settings there. And so this is where you're gonna decide how the URL is gonna be for these different languages, okay? So typically, they'll, there's a lot of, actually there's a lot of different ways you can configure this. You can have it be the language abbreviation dot website name dot com or whatever, or you can have it be the website name slash then the language abbreviation, and those are pretty much your options. Well, actually, let's take a look at them right here. So right here it says, the language is set from the directory name uh, in the pretty permalinks and this is what your different language translated posts would look like. So you can see right there is where we have the little bit that dictates the language translation. So this would be uh, for everything, whether it's in English and then if you change the language to Italian, it would switch to the abbreviation for Italian. Now there's one thing you might want though. If English is gonna be the language that is most used on the site, you might not want this slash en to be in the URL. And in that case, you can click on this box right here that would just not use this for the default language. And I recommend you do that. So you would just go ahead and click on that and then click on save changes. But you can look through this and choose the URL structure that you want. And that's kind of what I would recommend. Now there's a whole bunch of other settings here that you could look into in order to get the most out of this plugin for you. So now that we set that up, let me show you how easy it is to create a translated page. So I'm gonna go to pages right here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on this right here that says courses. So it's super easy to create a translation of this page and to link the two together. All you would do right here is first you would click on the plus and that's gonna take us to create a new page. I'm gonna type courses Italian or just courses IT cause um, I don't speak any Italian. I would put a real fancy word in Italian there if I knew one, uh, put your, page content here in Italian, or if you're using the page builder, you could build your page in Italian. Then all you have to do is click on publish. Okay, and so now that we've created the Italian version of this page, we just need to link the two. So I'm gonna go back and click on all pages. I'm gonna go right here into the original English version of this page. 
I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna start typing the name exactly what I named the page. And there it is, Courses IT. Now when I click on it, the two are linked. So let me click on Update so that these two are now permanently linked. So you can see when someone's viewing the course in English, or this page in English, it's gonna have the domain name slash courses. And I can click on this little edit button and it's gonna jump me right on over to the Italian version. And now it shows the domain name slash the language abbreviation slash courses hyphen IT, which is the page name. So you've just seen how easy it is to take a page in the original language, take a translated page, and then link the two together. So the next step is to have a translated version of your menus. And that is really easy with Polylang. You would just go to Appearance and then Menus. And you would create your menu in the alternative language. And then you would go right here and you would assign it. So right here you're looking at my primary menu in English. And then right here you would create a alternative menu in Italian and then you would assign it to the Italian translation. So this is how you would do that. You click on create a new menu and I can call this just IT for Italian. I'm gonna click on create menu and then I'm gonna go right here to pages and I'm gonna select the same menu items but just the Italian version. So I'm gonna go like that. Now I've got my menu item in there and then I'm gonna choose right now, uh, I want it assigned to the primary menu location in Italian and then click on save menu. Now you're gonna now need a way to switch from English to Italian or however many languages you have. And there's this new menu option that you can add to your menu in order to facilitate that switch. So it's right here called Language Switcher. So you'll want to add this to every menu in each language. So first I'm gonna add it to the Italian language. I'm gonna click on it and click Add to Menu. And you can click on this little down arrow and choose your different options. How you want this to show, do you want it to be a drop down, language name, flags, or whatever way that you want this language switcher to appear. So I'm gonna uncheck the language names and check on display flags. And then I'm gonna save it. Now I need to do the same thing for the English version of it. So let me go to the English menu right here. I'm gonna click on select. I'm gonna click on language switcher, add to menu. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna switch display flags because that's how I want it to look. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Now, just to be on the safe side, let me go to pages and the Italian version of that page I created. And let me just put a, a little bit of page content. I'm just putting the word Italian there and I'm gonna update it. So now, let's see what this looks like. So I'm gonna go to the courses page in English and I can get there by just clicking right here. And here it is. So now you can see I've got my menu and then right here, I have my flags. Now you could probably adjust the styling of this to make one flag larger or put less menu spacing and that would be a CSS customization. Now when I click on this Italian flag, what should happen is this menu here should change to show just that one menu item that I added. So I'm gonna click on that. My URL just changed and there it is. Here's that page and now it says Italian. And so you would obviously want to format your Italian page same as your other language page. The only difference would be the language. But what's neat about this is say you have certain imagery, you can change the imagery on a per location basis. So uh, that's a, a nice thing about having this separate content. And you can see right here, the, uh, the widget title changed to Italian and all this is now in Italian. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, the US flag right there to jump back. And guys, that's as, as simple as it is to take WordPress and do these three different types of translation. Uh, there's tools already there. Uh, the, the process couldn't be any easier. Now, there could be some holes in how I explained this, and if you have further questions or if you have any problems, I'd like to encourage you to just go ahead and ask me in the comments section here, and I'll get the right answers, and if I need to add to this video, I will happily do so. Hey, before you go, I have something for you, and before I get into that, I wanted to ask you to do something for me. If you could give me a thumbs up on this video, and if you're not a subscriber, click on the subscribe button right beneath me. If you have a question on this video, I'd be happy to answer it. You can also leave a comment or a question down below this video. Hey, I put together a course just for you, and I'm going to give it to you for free. All you have to do is click on the button right here on the right. It's called the Three Steps to WordPress Success. It's an awesome course. You're going to love it. I would love for you to join in and enroll as a student in this course. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I do it just for you.